Why don't you give me a sign? This is Corinna Jane. That leaves a trail along that shore. It's not your problem, it's mine. With her brand new single, Give Me a Sign. As featured on BBC Introducing. It's just the way it's gotta be. Corinna Jane, give me a sign. Out now. Open it. Please. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the fan carpet. Tonight we are here at BFI London Film Festival 2021. Well, I guess it's a mixture of a few things. Um, so I grew up in the Southwest and, and Texas, or the South, depending on how you feel about it on that day. Um, but uh, the Western was kind of something I, I did grow up with watching. You know, my grandfather used to watch it, my, my father, my parents. Um, but I also kind of lived in the Western. You know, I grew up on the farm. I grew up uh, also, you know, in the city, but I grew up around horses. I grew up around shotguns. I grew up around hot sun and, and, and all the elements. And I think when I first read the script, I thought, okay, well, I don't think we've seen this before, though I've lived it, you know, I guess I was 20 nine when I first read the script. I'm 32 now, so there's that. Um, and I thought, okay, this, this is an opportunity. Um, and then again, just like uh, a little bit of Regina, a little bit of Driss, um, I knew Driss was attached to it, so I thought, okay, well, we got something going on here. Um, and then I did, I, I too spoke with James, and James does live um, and speak and articulate kind of life through a Western. You know, there's something about the danger of a Western. There's something about the um, uh, um, feral, feral grind of a nature of, of, of a Western. You know, you're in the nature, you're, you're dealing with some real morality. You're dealing with some real fate. You're, you're on the frontier and you're trying to figure it out. And um, I was excited to try to jump into that. The interesting part about Nat is when, when I read the script, I don't meet, uh, we don't meet the man, Nat Love, until maybe seven pages in. Um, but for me, the most important part of Nat Love is what happens in those first seven pages. Um, of course, it's, our, it's our, our prelude to the film. And you see a young boy who's 10 years old who witnesses one of the most um, horrendous things that any human being could, could experience, the violent death. Uh, and murder of his uh, mother and father. And so that gave me, that let me know off top, we've got a long way to go. Because um, somehow this man, I mean, we, I think we've all heard the phrase, you know, you know, heal the boy, save the man. You know, heal the woman, save, uh, heal the girl, save the, save, save the, save the woman. Um, that was the mission. Um, and then we were in the West. So the most interesting part about the process was what happened between 10 years old and 33, what happened to him? Um, how did he become this man? Well, first off, he survived. And so how did he survive? So the trauma that he had had to be healed, and he had to heal that by getting what he needed. He lost love. He lost protection. And something, something unfair happened to him. And so it's so interesting that you say uh, equality, because that's kind of the, the, the driving force for Nat. I remember writing on my script, I just want to make it even. Right, this man does not rob from banks, but I will rob you if you rob from the bank. That's even. That's fair. I'm not going to kill you, right? I'll kill you in the church, but I'll give you the money. I'll let the church keep the money. That's all good. You know what I mean? Which is why when we get to the, to the end of our story, that inner conflict is so real and so raw, because what Rufus has done, by all accounts, is fair. And now there's a reckoning, an internal reckoning. Um, and then there's the horse riding, and then there's the guns, and then there's all, you know, all, 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 all those things. Um, but all of that was fueled by that, that pain, that, that discomfort, you know, to, 
to make it even. You've, you've put me all the way down the hill at such a young age, and I've got to get back up, back up top, you know, to, to, to be whole. So um, that was the internal work and preparation for it. Now you, now you can see why I wanted him to be not love. Yeah. Like I told him, I'm just like, that's not love. Bring him to me. Someone must know him. You know what I'm saying? Could I say something quite, as, as my brother James says, slightly controversial? Go ahead. Um, I think that's progress. I think that, that that's progress, that we can all be one, right? That the pandemic puts us all as a human species in the same bucket. But when peace comes, when there's no enemy, um, unfortunately we do, I'll speak from my experience, from my way of, of growing up, we do have a way of separating ourselves. I grew up Methodist, they're Baptists down the street, that we've labeled ourselves. I'm African American. You're light skinned, I'm dark skinned. I'm medium complexed, actually. You know. um, we do do that. That's Rufus Buck's gang, this is Nat Love's gang. Yeah. We do separate ourselves. And I think it's through storytelling, through the progress of really looking at, seeing the separation and then trying to figure out what brings us together? And in most cases, it's, 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 a, it's a very spiritual conflict. We realize at the end, everyone's seen the movie. We know we realize at the end, right? No, no. spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> right? That, to me, is, is progress. You know, and I, and I, I do think that it is a, um, a malfunction. Of, of human beings that we do separate ourselves. However, it is something that we do. And what makes you more human, what allows us to move forward is the telling of these stories where we do have these separations. And because of this tribalism, because of this inherent separation that we do, we overcome it in the film. We overcome it through storytelling. And that's all I'll say. I'm Sophia Jessica. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more. Really? I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.